with Shonversation and today I'm going to do a pack orders with me video. This is my first one. So if it's a mess, y'all forgive me. So we're going to work on Raya's order right now. So this is her ticket. Got her address covered up, but this is her ticket. So what I normally do is, and I'll have to show you guys at another time how I um, arrange my tickets and stuff. But I cut my laminating sheets like this. So it's not a whole sheet. It's a half sheet. Probably less than a half, actually. So it gives me more control and balance over the laminating process, actually, than a whole sheet. And I'll show you why. But right now, she ordered 12 envelopes. She wanted them all blank. So they're all cut. And what I do when I cut, because my printer is a little bit funky and it bleeds the ink because there's so much ink and I think it's, you know, dark ink for the hair and all of that stuff, it bleeds onto the next envelope. So you'll notice that I have just separators in between each envelope. So I just take it, flip it upside down, kind of fold it that way, turn my light on. And just use a bone folder. And I hand fold my husband. It's trying desperately to find something that'll do, you know, precision folding. We haven't found anything yet. It doesn't bother me. But I think guys are all about efficiency. So that's what he wants. Skipped one. And I use the bone folder so that it's just super flat. And I can tell how it's going to fall in the pocket. That still doesn't mean that I don't have to do some trimming or straightening or something like that because you are hand folding and you know, we're human. And that's it for that. I save these scraps of paper if they're not ruined because sometimes you can use them to fold on if you don't have a little acrylic board, which this is useful. You want to laminate against something white if you're laminating so that you can see any debris that might have fallen into the laminating pouch. The next thing I do is I trim and turn that light on. And I do this just to make sure that the envelopes are straight because if they're not and you 
laminate them then the laminate kind of sticks out in a weird way so I just go over each one just to make sure that it's folded straight and for the most part they are you don't have to trim much if you have like big parts off that you have to trim then don't do that because it'll change the size of the envelope so what you want to do is just pull the envelope over a little bit more and um fold it that way just refold basically So I check each one, I check the front, and what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm pressing down. So it looks like I'm just clamping, but I'm not. I'm actually pressing, applying pressure because when it goes inside the laminating pouch, it's going to be flat. If you press it down, you'll see what part is going to hang out from the laminating pouch. So that's what I'm doing, and I just, you know, take my finger and I just go all the way down. I'm used to doing it, so... Like I said, you should not have fat pieces coming off of your envelopes. It should be very, very thin so it doesn't change the width of your envelope. Okay, I'm super, super sorry if this vacuum is loud. <clears throat> if it is, just turn your volume down a little bit because the next thing I'm going to do is vacuum all 12 of these envelopes before I pouch them up. So, sorry. So after that, I put them in this little tray. This is just for, I believe it's for sunglasses. So I got this off of Amazon. Everything that you do when you're doing a cash envelope shop, or I'll say everything that I do is just about efficiency. How fast can I move? Like that's what I work on. And so I try to find stuff and it can be, you know, simple objects that you use around the house. Um, a plate rack would work. They have the wooden ones from Ikea. But I just get this because it's small and compact and it fits on my desk. And I just lay them in there. Typically, this whole thing is full, but I'm just doing this, you know, order here to show you guys how I laminate. So, again, like I said, I, I cut my pouches a weird way. I know some people use full sheets. I do not. I cut this in half and cut the top off. 
I do not throw the tops away. Anything that you pretty much, you know, would normally discard, you can use at some point or another. So I try to keep stuff in case I can use it. So I take it, I press my envelope completely flat with the palms of my hands because what I'm doing is I'm feeling for anything that may have come inside the laminating pouch, believe it or not. They do not always come clean. So you have sometimes some grittiness in there. And so I press along the edge because I'm just making sure that there's nothing there. I look at the back and you want to press down because you don't always see, you know, everything on here. And you know, you're looking to see, okay, did anything get in my pouch? I think I need to wipe my hands because of the ink. So you want to constantly be checking your hands and just making sure that in between applications that require you to be in contact with ink and then you're getting ready to laminate your envelopes that you wash your hands or have little alcohol pads on hand um, to wipe your hands and stuff. You just don't want any transfer. And pink envelopes are the worst to transfer to. So I just take my pouch, I press down with my ring finger, my middle finger to slide it in and I'm lifting it up. If you do a flat slide, my printer transfers ink a lot. And so I can't do flat slides. I have to lift my envelopes up, push it all the way down to the bottom, and then press down. It's a lot. It's a lot. So then again, I look to see if anything is in there. I'm making sure that it's flat. Let's move on to the next one. So if anybody's ever ordered from me and you wonder why your order didn't go out the same day, next day, it was taking so long. This is why you could be, you know, in line behind somebody who has one of my favorite customers, um, Talisha, order, you know, like a hundred envelopes. So if you're behind Talisha's order, you know, and I'm having to do this with each one of hers, it, it it might take a while so this is why I wanted to kind of share what my process is like because I know sometimes people wonder you know sort of what's going on with their order so this is this is it ladies I'm pulling the pocket open so that the envelopes reach all the way down to the bottom. If you do not do that, like I had someone helping me one time and she didn't pull the pockets open and I had to do all of the envelopes over. If you push it along the bottom, then you know it's in the same place every single time. So that's what I like. So I just, and it's a gentle tug. Don't snatch too hard and, and, you know, open up the bottom of it. I know I've watched some of the cash envelope videos on YouTube and not everybody vacuums their envelopes. Like I get it. It seems cumbersome, but it's what works for me because I'm doing a lot of cutting and so there's always like you know dust and debris from the paper and just stuff that you're cutting so you want to make sure that that doesn't land on the envelope and create like little air pockets so this is what it looks like when I'm done of course I'll laminate this 
which I'm not going to do on this video because everybody knows how to laminate. So I'm going to show you what it looks like after. I'll use this one. So what it, this is what it looks like after it's laminated in that pocket. And I just take my scissors and you want to have different types of scissors. So you've got scissors for trimming and you've got scissors for cutting. So the trimming scissors, for me, they just cut a finer cut. They don't chew up your envelopes. And I got these from Target. But I just cut along the outside edge to open it up. And then I just take a cutting board, slide it in. And just round the corners. That's it. If it requires hole punching, which hers is no edge unpunched. But if this required hole punching, I would just take my hole puncher. <laughs> and this is another little hack that I use. Maybe other people use it. I haven't seen it. So I don't know. I don't get a chance to watch a lot of videos. But I just take a, a regular mirror. And I angle it. So that I can see the sort of inner guts of the hole punch because I have my hole punch set a certain way even to the point where I have some of the stuff glued down in here so that it doesn't move if anybody's ever used these hole punchers you know they're finicky and sometimes you can you know throw off so the mirror shows me without me having to sort of lean in and take a look at what's going on back here it shows me what's going on so then I can just push it in and punch with confidence that everything's gonna be the same way so after I do that, I'll show you. It's kind of off to the side. I have it on a shelf. I use this and it's got an A6 um, envelope. Oh my God, it's not getting in the camera. Let's see. So it's got an A6 binder up top with clips. I just clipped it on and it's got an A7 binder on the bottom. So every time I punch, like not every single punch but if it's a new set I measure it against this just to make sure that it's going to fit correctly in the A6 binder because you don't want to send somebody something and it doesn't fit and then if I had A7s I would measure it against this one your punch at that point is going to be in the same place because you have the mirror showing you that nothing's moved and so all of these should line up and the next thing you're going to do is you know put it against the rest of your envelopes and if this one was right because you measured it all of the holes should line up together. So you always want to be checking that and not just assume that your hole punch didn't move. So I'm going to move Raya's order out of the way and show you one that already at the stage of being ready to go. So this is a 12 piece or 12 month savings challenge. So it's got the, you know, the month and the girl on the front and then the challenge on the back. And so I just go through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, just make sure all of them are there. I gotta hurry up because my phone is going dead, apparently. And let me just check her order really quick. I don't have 
So this is Levada's tickets, and she wants add edge hole punch, which is what I was looking for to just make sure before I start punching like a crazy person. And so what I try to do is I match all of my tickets. If you see the border on here, all of my tickets to the biggest set in the order, because it might be multiple sets and they're different designs. Obviously I can't create a ticket for every design, but the set that has the most envelopes in it, I match the border to that. So she wants hole punch. This hole punch is, I've had it since I started, so sometimes it gets stuck. So if you see me wiggling stuff, that's what I'm doing. Getting old girl to act right. The next thing I do after I've hole punched everything is again, make sure all the holes are lined up. So you don't send some out that aren't where they need to be. And then I vacuum again. So if it's loud, just turn the volume down for just a little bit so I can vacuum. So you would think that's it, but it's not. <laughs> so then you gotta go back through, of course, organize them by month again. And then because of how I laminate my envelopes and I am cutting the tops off, sometimes the, I guess the glue from the laminate drags through my laminator. And sometimes you'll see it, you know, up top. So I just take my hand and just go over it just to make sure. And I just wanna make sure that there's no Again, debris, because you're in a room, I am, and I cut a lot of paper. 
And so stuff is always landing somewhere. It's always dusty. So I just do give it just a once over. So I'm just looking along the edges and I'm like, okay, is there anything there? Is it okay? If you, you know, want, you can just take, I have just a makeup brush and you can, you know, brush the edges like that. It, same thing. So that makes it simpler. The next step is going to be to look at your edges and you want to just do a slight tug just to make sure nothing's going to come loose or anything like that. But you want to make sure that they're open. So that when your customer gets them, they don't have to open them. So see how this one is stuck? You do not want to pull hard. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to fold it a little bit like that. And it'll sort of pop open. But if it doesn't, like this one didn't, just going to take your scissors and just cut it open straight down. And the only thing that's happened is there was a fold in this uh, fold misalignment in this one that I did not catch. And the laminate sticks together. So that's it. Opens like the rest. Then you want to pull a belly band to tie it all together. I've seen some girls where they just, you know, slide their set into the cello bags. And, you know, if that's how you want to do it, that works too. It'll save you some time doing it that way. But I just put the belly band around it to kind of make sure it's lined up. Press it down. And you want to do a tight tug so that they're not sliding all over the place. And then I hold my thumb so I know where this ended at, this piece. Because you're going to take your crafter's tape. And I just do like a diagonal swipe and then one swipe straight down. And I pull it tight like that. And... Hopefully, I have packaging for that. Maybe not. What I try to do is I try to cut my packaging ahead of time. But I'm not seeing it for this particular set. Give me a minute. So each set of packaging, set of um, envelopes have their own specific packaging. So that's what I was looking for. Like Raya's, the one that I showed you how I pocketed up, hers will go in here. <clears throat> so it matches her envelopes. So it's just all about, you know, 
branding as best I can because, of course, I'm, you know, not a corporation or anything like that. So I'm cutting everything by hand. And I just want to make sure that that lines up. So I'm just going to give it a quick chop. So then you take your envelope, turn it over. Again, crafters tape, two swipes. And so this is two different pieces. So short square piece. And then I just press it down so that it stays on there it's not falling off and then I slide it in here so it just says you know fill your wealth beautifully thanks them for their order on the back and I don't like the way that looks so I'll back another day. Fold it over. Put a little sticker on the back. And then I just fold the um, invoice sheet, order sheet, into thirds. You want to do this with a bone folder if you can because sometimes the ink drags if you do it with your fingers and you just don't want to ink the smear and then you got to print the whole ticket over and all that good stuff so i try to use a bone folder so that's that so how i typically do mine is i take the set put the ticket on top and then this is just a card that explains, okay, you know, how to take care of your envelopes and it thanks you for your order. I don't have a freebie that's blue brick, but what I do is I typically just slide a freebie of some sort. So this is just a savings challenge, 3,000 and 5,000. Just slide it behind that. And then one or two cash request slips. I'll either slide them in the front like that or slide them in here. And that's it. I'll take that off. And her ticket there, I put this on top, put that like that. Slide it in an envelope. And I like the no bin ones. Um, and I think these are seven by nine, if I'm not mistaken. I write the customer's name on it. Laveda. Weigh it. Just write that on there. So then when it's time to ship everything, it's all done. And that's how I do it. Talk to you soon. Bye.